Pitch bend messages are normally sent from a keyboard instrument via a dedicated physical controller, and it's usually a pitch bend wheel. And when you release the wheel, they naturally return to a center position. And when you release it, there's no pitch bend sent at that point. So you have either positive or negative pitch bend. And that's different from other MIDI messages we've looked at so far, where you have a positive range and a negative range. Now, pitch bend messages are used to modulate the pitch of the sound that's being triggered, that's receiving that pitch bend or those pitch bend messages on the correct MIDI channel. And it modulates it either positive, meaning transposing it upwards or in a negative range, transposing it downward. Now, pitch bend messages include their own status byte plus two data bytes. Now, they need the two data bytes in order to generate a fine enough resolution to make the pitch changes sound smooth, to make them not sound stepped. Now, the normal 127 discrete steps that are available in a 7-bit binary MIDI message are inadequate to create a smooth, continuous kind of pitch transition. So instead, two data bytes are used, and it results in a 14-bit message. So as a result, we have a range, instead of being 127 steps, we have a 14-bit number that results in a range of 16,383 steps. So typically, the range is displayed, again, in positive and negative values because it goes either up or down as either minus 8,192 to positive 8,192. And when it's in its neutral position, meaning no pitch bend messages being sent, that's a value of zero. Now, the amount that the sound is going to be transposed is set on the device that receives. It's not fixed in the MIDI message. The MIDI pitch bend messages sends the data and the device receiving it responds to that data depending on how it's set. Now, I'm going to move my pitch bend wheel on my controller up and then release it. And let's look at what happens. So it started instead of from zero, it started from 512 because not every pitch bend wheel on every controller works perfectly. But the idea is that it's pretty close to zero. And then it goes all the way up until 8,191. Again, it's not extremely precise, although the MIDI spec does dictate 8,192. And then when I release it, it went back down and it did hit zero. Now, let's move it in negative territory. I'm going to clear this and I'll move it down and then release it. So now we see it starting from negative values, or starting from zero technically, but moving in the negative direction down to negative 8,192. And then when I release it, it climbs back up. I released it quickly. That's why it snapped back up more quickly, and there's less discrete steps of it. But that's the resolution that's available. Now let's look within a DAW. I've programmed up that same type of movement. And here we can see the pitch bend messages. We see the value of zero climbing all the way up until... 8,191, again, rounding it off, and then turning to zero. And then when I move in negative direction, it's moving all the way down to negative 8,192, and then I released it and it snapped back up to zero. Now I'm gonna play a note on this software instrument that's loaded up, and we'll see that the pitch bend range is set to two, meaning it's gonna sweep or modulate the pitch by two semitones, up or down. So when I move the wheel up, it'll go to a range of one tone or two semitones and the same thing in reverse. But I can set this to any value I want. For example, I can have it modulated by an octave. Now pitch bend messages are separate from note messages. And just to demonstrate that, I'm gonna create another track and I'm gonna record a straight note on this instrument. And now if I play it back and have this pitch bend data happening at the same time, we'll hear the pitch bend applied to the note. Now all DAWs have some settings and preferences to deal with pitch bend data. And for example, we can see here that in MIDI messages here for software instruments, we have pitch bend to center position. So this means that when you're starting to play, it'll automatically reset to a center position in case you're playing back and it's in the middle of a pitch bend scoop or there hasn't been maybe a return to zero pitch bend message, this will center it. And we have this separately for software instruments and external MIDI instruments. And most DAWs have similar types of commands. And here's another one where we can chase optionally 
different types of MIDI messages, pitch bend being one of them. So meaning if I have some pitch bend event happening here and I start the note playback from later, it'll chase the pitch bend that's happening earlier. And as well, we can filter out various types of MIDI messages. And you can see here that pitch bend messages are separate types of MIDI messages from note messages, as are the two types of aftertouch messages that we looked at previously. See you for more in the next video.